I'm Dr Eloise Coffey and in a series of bite-sized videos I'll be looking at some of the world's most famous paintings and painters. In this short video I'm going to be uncovering some of the stories behind a 15th century masterpiece by the Flemish artist Jan van Eyck, a work that's been described as one of Western art's greatest riddles. The Arnolfini portrait, painted in 1434 in the city of Bruges, now part of modern-day Belgium. The Arnolfini portrait is a painting people think they don't know, but as soon as they're shown a picture of it say, oh yes, the one with the pregnant woman clutching her green dress, and the man in the big hat. At one time, the couple was assumed to be an Italian merchant working in Bruges by the name of Giovanni Arnolfini with his first wife, Constanza Drenta. Now it's been suggested that the woman is in fact his second wife, Giovanna Cinami. This small jewel of a painting intrigued visitors to the National Gallery in London from the moment it was first put on display in 1842. The National Gallery, then as now, was a free public gallery with extended opening hours. This meant visitors from all walks of life, including those who had to work, crowded to see it, and it caused a sensation. Newspapers of the time wrote about it, and middle-class gallery goers bought souvenir prints and replica mirrors, like the one in the painting. Just as today we might buy a cushion decorated with Monet's irises, or a fridge magnet of Van Gogh's sunflowers. But why did the Arnolfini portrait so fascinate the Victorians? At that time, the National Gallery had nothing quite like it. It was very different to other paintings in their growing collection. Gallery goers would have been used to seeing work showing dramatic scenes from mythology or from the Bible, or perhaps portraits of powerful and wealthy people. But the Arnolfini portrait was something new. It took everyday life as its subject, offering a window into a private domestic world. And it was full of homely objects, a pet dog, prized items of furniture, pieces of fruit ripening on a windowsill, a brush, discarded shoes. This kind of painting, depicting everyday scenes and objects, is now called genre painting. One of its most famous practitioners being that other great artist of domestic interiors, Johann Vermeer, creator of The Milkmaid, and Woman in Blue reading a letter. The Victorians were further intrigued by the Arnolfini because it seemed to tell a story, and the Victorians loved narrative paintings. There were all kinds of theories, one of the more bizarre being that she was visiting the doctor and having her pulse taken. And so the fascination grew. It was a mystery, a painting full of hidden meanings, laying it open to various interpretations by experts and public alike over the centuries. Let's look at four of the most popular ones. Interpretation number one. At first glance, it's often been assumed that the woman in the Arnolfini portrait is pregnant. The protective gesture of her hands held over her apparently swollen belly seem to support this idea. Added to this are the many objects symbolising fertility scattered throughout the painting. Notice the apricots ripening on the windowsill to the left and, behind them, a cherry tree coming into blossom glimpsed through the window. Yet, appearances can be deceptive. It's now generally accepted that the woman isn't pregnant at all, that her seemingly large stomach is, in reality, just the thick green material of her dress gathered up in her hand, a fashion or an artistic convention of the time. Other pictures from around the same period have women in similar poses gathering up their skirts, and the similarity is striking. Given that many of these other paintings depict virgin saints, it's highly unlikely that they're pregnant. Interpretation number two. 
In 1934, almost a hundred years after the Arnolfini portrait first went on public display, the art historian Erwin Panofsky wrote an influential article in the Burlington magazine in which he suggested that the painting was not only a portrait but also a legal record, that it was a wedding scene which also acted as a kind of marriage certificate. Looking closely, two figures can be seen reflected in the mirror on the back wall. According to Panofsky's theory, they were acting as witnesses to the nuptials of the couple in the foreground, the figure in blue being the artist Jan van Eyck himself. Directly above the mirror is a Latin inscription, incorporating van Eyck's signature. It translates as, Jan van Eyck was here, 1434. At the time it was unusual for artists to sign, let alone date paintings, although it has to be said van Eyck was known for doing this. Nonetheless, Panofsky claimed that the Arnolfini portrait was a kind of pictorial marriage contract, dated and signed in Latin, the language of official business. Notice in addition how Arnolfini is holding up his hand, as if to take an oath, while his other hand is joined to hers. This could be why the painting is sometimes known jokingly as Mr and Mrs Arnold Feeney. Interpretation number three. Another very different theory is that the Arnolfini portrait is a memorial painting commissioned by Giovanni Arnolfini in memory of his first wife, Constanza Trenta. Look at the way in which the two main figures are painted in different styles. The man looks as though he's done from the flesh, captured with astonishing realism, something for which Jan van Eyck is famed. One of the first artists to use oil paint, van Eyck was considered by some to be an alchemist because of the detail he achieved in this new medium. And the objects and surroundings are painted with the same precision. The chandelier, the hair on the pet dog, the light reflecting off the rosary beads. What one critic described as holding up the mirror to reality. Somewhat distractingly, it's been pointed out that Giovanni also bears an uncanny resemblance to Vladimir Putin. By contrast, the woman is painted less realistically, which must have been deliberate given Van Eyck's skill. She's more idealised, like an icon or a figure from a religious painting, rendered with less shading, perspective and depth. And then there are what have been identified as symbols of mortality scattered throughout the painting. The extinguished candle above the head of the woman. The fact his wooden shoes, or patterns as they were known, point outwards towards the world, whereas hers point away. And the dog, which, in this interpretation of the painting, has been compared to the stone effigies commonly used on women's tombs at this time. All these clues, it has been argued, prove that the Arnolfini portrait is, in fact, a commemorative painting. Interpretation number four. Another suggestion is that the Arnolfini portrait's real meaning is far more mundane and prosaic, that it's simply a double portrait of a fashionable couple showing off their wealth. The real Giovanni Arnolfini was, after all, one of the first merchant bankers working in Bruges when it was a thriving place of trade and commerce. Looked at from this perspective, Arnolfini could simply be raising his hand to welcome two visitors into his sumptuous home. The painting is groaning with luxury objects, the many yards of costly material, the fur and lace trimmed clothes, the extravagant bed, the ornate chandelier, the oriental rug and the mirror decorated with scenes from the Bible. Rugs and mirrors were highly prized objects at this time. And notice the way the light is painted to fall on these objects as though shining a spotlight on them, highlighting their value. 
But whatever the story behind this riddle of a painting, and the jury still out, what is undeniable is that great works of art always have the power to surprise and throw up new questions.